Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Knowledge those that are present here. The Minister, obviously, of Information, who has just spoken, and thank you for your brief message. And um, obviously, we have a provincial minister that's present here, the UN uh, colleagues that are here, represented by the acting coordinator, so to say, the UNESCO representative who has spoken, and thank you for your message, sir and uh, the chairperson of the World Press Freedom uh, Day National Organizing Committee. Madam, thank you for your message. And uh, obviously, I suspect that we have members of the diplomatic corps that are here. You are well recognized. And uh, the board and management of the Independent Broadcasting Authority board and management of the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation, the board and management of the Times of Zambia, the one that you talked about, uh, my dear brother, this site. I, I do listen attentively. It's, it's, it's a habit of mine of a long, long time. So I got you, we got your message loud and clear. And uh, media associations, that are here, stakeholders as well, and um, journalists, journalists, media practitioners, other media houses, and the uh, related businesses that uh, are here, and uh, obviously distinguished guests, and shall I just say, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. We're delighted, extremely delighted uh, to be here and to join you members of the press and the media in general uh, to commemorate this year's World Press Freedom Day. Very important day to not just you, the journalists, but to all of us. Because as you know, journalism, media is integral um, to any democratic system. The media, journalists, I'm not just talking about professional frontline journalists, but even those that sit behind the scenes to get things happen for the population to receive, to consume uh, information. Uh, this is collectively your day, but it's collectively our day, all of us. And that's why I'm here. I think this is the first time you've had, I suspect, uh, a sitting head of state, your servant, attending such a forum, such a platform. So it underscores our commitment um, to the call of duty in this aspect of our area of work. So we note that um, the activities surrounding this, uh, this event obviously include the National Media Conference where matters are being discussed, will be discussed with the aim of taking media profession to greater heights. And I'm glad, this is the good, things, good thing about speaking later, I'm glad that a number of issues have been raised by previous speakers, especially the issue to do with professionalism. Professionalism. And I think it goes without saying, being professional means to be all-rounder. Pros and cons, all sides, up, down, side, front, back, must be considered as we conduct our work. And then we can qualify to be called professional. 
If we just deal with one aspect of our duty, most likely we will fail the test of professionalism. So I'm glad that this subject has been touched by the previous speakers. So Chairperson, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we value the role of the media, as I've said, in the development of our country. Our beloved country, Zambia, is in great need of development. We all know that in the last 10 years, we lost, we wiped out development gains that were made. The economy declined from 6-7% growth per annum to 5, down to 4, 3, 2, to 0, to 0. And in an environment like that, clearly, you cannot support the needs of many sectors of the economy, including the media, press, media. And the things I hear, which I knew before I came here, conditions of service, challenges, difficulties, it is much more difficult to deliver these when the economy is declining, as what we experienced in the last 10, but more in the last seven years. It's difficult to keep even media businesses alive, commercially viable, if the economy is declining. Very difficult. And I think it's important that we all understand that media in the context of economic development cannot sit outside of the challenges that would arise when the economy gets wiped out when your debt burden increases to levels never seen before in this country, never seen even before the, before the hippie days. Levels of debt that we live with today basically almost tripled more than the hippie efforts that we made. And having cleaned up, having had cleaned up our balance sheet then, national balance sheet, national balance sheet, I repeat, in terms of the liability side, which is the debt. I never ever imagined myself, my colleagues on my right, colleagues on the left, that in a few years' time, we'll be grappling with a debt which is three times worse than what we had. Never believed that. Somehow, <laughs> It happened. Somehow we allowed it to happen. I think we must all take responsibility to what happened, but more importantly, how can we avoid that such things do not recur for the third time round? So now we have to work together, and the media is part of this team that ought to work together. Otherwise, it will be difficult to unlock uh, business success to make it possible for businesses to succeed in the media industry as in other industries. No question about it. It will make it more difficult for us to deliver better conditions of service for the media. Media frontline, media in the back room, so all media. So I think we should wage this war together. Uh, to resuscitate economic growth. And I think, again, your professionalism is called upon to report correctly. And I'll come to that very shortly. So it's very important, Madam Chair, that we have a shared objective. We have an operating environment enveloping everything we do and that we must play our part as a media as the press in, in, in that bigger in that whole picture. Radio, television stations, newspapers, bloggers, photographers, reporters, producers, and editors, we are all responsible. And we ask that we continue to show our commitment, our dedication to keeping, to growing this environment 
that I talked about, to keeping our citizens here at home and outside of our territorial boundaries. Because of technological changes, you can never, today's world, produce news for domestic consumption only. What is news for domestic consumption immediately hits the global platform, isn't it? So, so we, we must be conscious of that. And I think work in a manner that builds rather than takes away our value from our own industry, our own business, but also negatively affecting others. We recognize and value all media houses, press, and media professionals across the breadth of this country. But I want to repeat that you live in challenging times. We live in challenging times because no longer can we hide in a domestic jurisdiction. We are exposed. Anything we do, even when we do it on our small phone, iPhone, we are still exposed. Technology now allows us to be exposed to see who generated that news. So it means we must be responsible all the time. I want to acknowledge that yours indeed is really a noble profession. When it's managed properly, when it's discharged, our duties are discharged properly, is truly a noble profession. As it used to be in the days of typewriters, as it used to be in the days of uh, photo, let me not say photocopy. What was that machine we used to use to duplicate, duplicating machine, right? I ran it myself as a professional in, the, in, the, in, in our business. So it was noble then, it is still noble today, and we should keep it this way. I think it's very important. In recent years, it's already been said by my colleagues who spoke before me, we have observed or we observed how difficult, how difficult and intolerable the operating conditions, the operating conditions under which all of you had to perform your duties and do it freely. But you shouldn't be surprised. You should be pleased that you have a government now that's committed to making this environment better. You should have no doubt at all, because what we said when we were in opposition 10 months ago, even just nine months ago, is what we are doing now. And we spoke not for you, but for all of us in this intertwined society. We spoke for you, we speak for you today. We were victims, you were victims 10 months ago. Some of us, this fellow seated here, was in the group of victims, just like yourselves, 10 months ago, only 10 months ago, lest we forget. We were all victims. So as we were sharing a challenge together 10 months ago, the good news is that we are still a team today. And one of your team members 10 months ago, a victim, today is sitting in the office of the president. So take advantage of that. Utilize that opportunity. You have a team member sitting in the president's as your servant. After all, you put him there, didn't you? Didn't you? I just want you to relax a, a bit because too many speeches have been given. Just relax a little bit. It's a very conversation. I like it that way because otherwise you, you're trying to listen to what did that one say, what the chair lady, the chairperson say, what did the UN colleague say, what the minister say. Just it's a very conversation. I prefer it that way. So, I shall repeat, we were together, we were in trouble together 10 months ago. We are together now, when an opportunity exists 
to better the operating environment. You have heard, I'm sure. It is clear that we cannot continue the way it was 10 months ago. And so I hear my brother was talking about speeches and words. No? Yes, we start from saying what we feel. Our thought processes come through the mouth. Sometimes we write for you. But now is the opportunity to better this environment as a team together. Together. There is no HH sitting on the left, you are sitting on the right. No, <laughs> we're sitting together. Let's do it professionally, responsibly. As we commemorate the World Press Freedom Day, we wish to pay tribute to the media in our country, region, and the world for your work. Not only keeping the public informed, but your role in deepening our democracy. You know that this fellow speaking here is the love of democracy, is the love of the rule of law, is the love of freedoms, which freedoms were denied to many of us again just 10 months ago. Don't forget that at Sun FM, when I was attacked, was I talking on my own? Who was facilitating that? I was sitting in there with a young man called Curtis. And Curtis and I had to escape through the, the roof. So when the chase was against HH, automatically the chase was against the media as well, isn't it? In that case, media practitioner, but also a media house. Curtis, a journalist. HH, so-called unwanted in the country. And Sun FM, a media house. So we were all affected. The bullets were coming from the ground floor and just whizzing through. Even the owner of the station had to scamper. Now, that should be a thing of the past. All we need to do is not to persuade each other UN system colleagues. No. We don't need persuasion. All we need to do is to work as a team to continually improve that environment. That process of improving the environment sometimes is through legal reform. Certain pieces will be through just our values. How decent we are? Do we care about others? And I'll come to that. If you write a story and say, HH is a Mason, I know the temple in which he prays. And you know that HH has never been a Mason. You journalist, you are lying. That's what was happening 10 months ago. So you then wanted your objective was to see HH hated and probably punished. Was that, right? was that the right thing to do? No. But also, for that story to garner legs, to run, it needed a media house to run on it, isn't it? How is it that the media houses ran on such stories? for days on end, for months, for years. But it was known that this is not true. So where is the professionalism there? As our colleague from the UN said, where are the facts there? Let's reflect. And as I come to an end, I will ask a few questions. I want to provoke the house today. I want to provoke this house positively today. So, now, we have radio stations. We're taking for granted that we have community radio stations, independent radio stations, which were threatened 10 months ago. Nakonde Radio, 
There was war there. Radio Mano. The list is long. Just 10 months ago. Today. No party thug. I like the word you used. I think it's you. Was it you? It was him. I agree with you. That was thuggery. And society tolerated it. We tolerated thugs. And it became normal. And the media practitioners and the, and the media houses were carrying news of thuggery. The media platform should have never carried the negative behavior of those thugs. And then they would have lost encouragement. They would have lost the appetite. How is it that their conduct grew and grew? Social media promoted it. Social media is an abstract. At behind social media is a human being. It's somebody. So I was saying sometimes we make these things changes through laws. And I'll come to that. We committed to that as well. Sometimes these changes come from our own characters. Characteristic, personality, values. Would I tell a lie about her? Knowing that it's a lie so that she can be hated. If I do that, I have lost it. But it's not just me. The media house that carries my lies again as her, they've also lost it, isn't it? I'll come to that shortly. But, Madam Chairperson, I want to share today that the radio stations you see in their numbers, they came through a struggle. Very serious struggle. Before the last 10 years, some of you need to be reminded that I'm really a true friend. The president, the servant you have today is one of you. I happen to have been the chairman of the Media Trust Fund. Madam, I don't know where Beston Monga is today. He was running the Media Trust Fund. I was the chairman. And against all odds, Madam Chairperson, we funded the establishment of radio stations, community radio stations. I'm very proud of that. You should be proud of the stations. So, the servant you have today has been with you, not from the front, but maybe from the back room. Because most young journalists, journalists here are not aware of that. So even the radio stations, some of which are doing well, a number of them got support from the Media Trust Fund. I think I'm right. Am I right, Baba? Yeah. Hey, uh, very good. Huh? For his and others' interest, there is a friend on the board together. So he's an old friend. So what he's saying, what he said today, I share. And he doesn't even to feel restricted to worry maybe this government will react negatively. Not at all. That's the thing of the past. So let's utilize this partnership positively and quickly. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.